I had a video request from V8 Jagnut. You want to know how this baler worked? It's really simple. Hay comes in here. As the auger's turning, it feeds it over. And see those fingers in there? When the baler's running, they come out and sweep the hay into the bale chamber. And then everything's timed perfectly. Like, so that these tines aren't in there when the plunger comes in, or else there'd be one heck of a crash. That's why everything's run by chains, not belts. So anyway, as the plunger goes in, with a full load of hay or whatever, a partial load, oh, whoops. there's a set of knives in there. Knife blade right here, and one right on the end of the bale chamber there. As it goes by, it'll cut the stalks off so they all fit in there nicely. And then it packs it in there real tight. Well, I'm talking real tight. Rams it in here. And then there's two pieces of twine from the twine box. Run up here. And as the hay comes in, it'll push them out. Pull them out slowly out of the twine balls. To see around here. And then this wheel, as the bale comes out, it, it slowly comes up. Lifts up that bar. And when it gets to there, it clicks. A little cam in here clicks inside this sprocket here. <clears throat> and as this sprocket turns around, it'll catch in one spot because this is all timed too. So that when, so that all this uh, twining session happens when the plunger's on the backstroke, so that the plunger isn't pushing hay through when the when these big needles are feeding the twine up, or else it'll break them off too. And anyway, this spins around, spins this gear assembly here, which turns these little gears, and I don't ask me how them that uh, knot tire works, because I ain't got a clue, no one really does except for the guy that designed it. It's really complicated in here, a bunch of, well it's not really complicated, it's simple as heck, but it ties little knots in there, and obviously, when it's done tying the knots, it leaves these little chunks of twine behind. And these springs, they push the, uh, this piece of iron and that piece of iron on the bottom in to keep the bales squashed so that when the plunger's coming, it packs the bales fairly tight so you can make small bales that have a lot of hay inside of them so they don't take up as much room. Here's just where the twine balls sit. And the bales just fall off the back here. Needs a bale buncher, so that'll uh, a bale buncher behind it or a kicker. A bale buncher will tow behind it, and uh, as the bales fall, they get caught in it. And um, then you dump it, dump the bale buncher after there's say 12 bales in it. Then it's easier to just pick up a bunch of bales instead of a one it, instead of one by one. Or a bale kicker, it would hook a PTO shaft onto here. This turns the shaft. And the kicker would be right here in this area where this plate is. And then um, as the bale comes out, it kicks and there's a trailer or a big wagon big wagon back here. And it'll kick the bale maybe 10, 15 feet into the air into the wagon and it gets caught in there. But you have to have everything just perfect for that to work. Oh, and the reason for this big flywheel on here is because as the plunger is going back and forth, it's quite a shock load. Like it, when this, when the plunger hammers the hay in there, it's quite a shock load on the PTO shaft and on the gears in the tractor, which would be bad for them. So this big flywheel takes up a lot of that shock load. Like when you're putting a big wad of hay through there, you can kind of hear the tractor lug down every time the plunger goes through, but not very much. Oh, and this ammo box here, it just holds the shear pins for the flywheel. There in this pill bottle here. shear pin here. If you plug it, this big, I don't know how heavy it is, maybe 500 pounds, it wants to keep going, so it'll just cut that little bolt off, and then this clutch will slip when the tractor's turning, and you'll notice that everything stops, so you shut the tractor off right away. Well, hopefully that explains that to you, V8 Jagnut.